As we dig deeper into how confidence computing works, we're going to be talking about attestation today, and specifically how attestation, the Gen Juno C class platform, as well as AWS Nitro can work together in a harmonious balance. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a simple application. And the simple application is going to be derived of a Docker container that will expose the configuration that will allow it to boot up correctly. And so think of a use case like an actual payment application where you need to have a token that connects to a gateway service to be able to accept transactions and to be able to process them. You want to be able to isolate that token away from your developers, but you also want to make sure that you can securely uh, give it to a developer and be able to allow them to operate in their day-to-day -day business. Now, what's very really unique about the Juno platform is we simplify and make this easier for our customers so they can do what we call secret injections. In this example as well, we're going to show you that we pre-generate uh, these configurations uh, so that you can actually use it as part of your build process. And if you're not familiar with Amazon KMS system, that you have an ability to use our infrastructure tool set to be able to automate that process. So you'll see here that um, this is the configuration specifically for what we're going to be exposing. And then we're going to create a customer managed key using AWS's um, interface, using our CLI tool set, so that we can basically pre-encrypt that configuration file to be able to be used with the Docker container we're about to be built. Now, if we look at the application itself, we've already generated the encrypted config. So we, that, we know that we're gonna be connecting to an encrypted S3 bucket with an encrypted file, and that this configuration environment variable will be exposed when it actually boots up the uh, Docker within the secure enclaves itself. Now, just like with anything, we're just gonna be building a Docker container, so nothing changes on your part, but we gotta build this into an enclave information file. And so you'll see here really quickly that it, in essence, is basically providing a way to download the Docker image, which is done locally. We're basically providing a way of uh, signing a private key and a signed certificate so that we can guarantee that this is truly what we want to run. And we're going to show you the measurements that we took so that we can use this as part of policy. And so in this example, we have a PCR0 measurement, which is a representation of the image that we just built. And then the PCR8 is actually the representation of the sign certificate. And so using a combination of these two things, we can actually allow this specific application in policy to be able to decrypt this information in the bucket that ultimately will be used in the Enclave when it spins up. Now, if I look at the KMS policy we also created automatically for you, you can see that this specific PCR measurement is actually part of the policy for decrypt. And that's really important to understand because we want to make sure that only this type of enclave with the sign certificate and this image can decrypt what's actually in the S3 bucket that we actually just created. Now, when I go ahead and run the Juno runtime to be able to run in the Nature Enclave, you'll see really quickly that I'm basically specifying that uh, enclave information file, I'm giving it some resources, and then when I tell the logs of the environment, you can see that it was easily able to actually decrypt that information in a matter of seconds. And that's kind of the unique nature of how we work with this environment. We have a hardened image that is designed to basically manage the in use, at rest, and in transit, and to be able to protect all the stuff while it's actually being validated, processed, and run. Now I'm gonna go ahead and terminate this real quick to show you kind of what would happen when a malicious actor comes into play and may ultimately affect how your application may perform. And we wanna show you how we have a protective mechanism that keeps it from being exfiltrated. Now, let's say for example, I'm a developer and I want to do something maliciously and I wanna provide some additional context for this application. Um, what I'm basically going to do now as that malicious developer is I'm going to make the changes to the Docker file and then I'm gonna to try to actually generate a EIF file with the sign certificate but in a modified way. And you'll see that in the PCR0 and the PCR8 that the measurements have changed. So there's specifically nothing similar to what we built last time that would allow this application to decrypt the file. But we wanna make sure that in this process that we can protect what is actually intended to run in this environment. And so when we run the Nginx uh, Nitro runtime again, and we go ahead and tell the logs, you'll see here really quickly that we are basically triple checking and validating that this measurement is actually what it's supposed to be. And if it isn't, we're going to actually just terminate it on the fly so that no one can access this environment. 
Now, what's interesting about this too is you may have a situation where uh, someone on the outside steals your container but may not have the correct sign certificate in this process. And so when we go ahead and run and build this enclave again, and we go kind of through the same process, you can see the PCR measurements have changed again. And on top of that, when we go and try to run this within the environment, you'll see that I will not be able to access that encrypted file to decrypt this process because of the simple fact that it doesn't even match up with the PCR measurements that we have set. Now, some of the key takeaways in these use cases is when you're developing software that you want to give to an end customer and you want to protect your intellectual property, this would be a very critical aspect of how you would do this because you would basically provide them an EIF file, you would basically provide them a runtime portion uh, that we would basically provide as a package, and then you would be able to, in essence, have this specific application a test into your environment so that only the designated users that are allowed to run this environment can actually truly run it. And this is a really great use case for healthcare, for banking. Um, it, it can go even down to the small business layer because we want to show that using confidential computing outside the box it cannot, does not have to be a hard process. And at Juna, we make it easy and really fun to be able to interface with. Thank you for watching this video.